Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. We were doing the methods of preparation of Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. In this video, let us understand how do we prepare Hello Arenes from diazonium salts. But before we come to that preparation, let us understand what a diazonium salt is. A diazonium salt is one that is that has a formula in which the benzene ring is there and it is substituted by N2X, where X is a halogen. And how is it prepared? A diazonium salt, when a primary aromatic amine in aqueous mineral acid is treated with sodium nitrite. What is sodium nitrite? NaNO2. In the presence of an of a mineral acid like HX, when it is treated, when uh, an amine, a primary amine is treated with this, it results in the formation of a diazonium salt. For example, you have aniline here, you react it with NaNO2 and HX is the mineral acid and at a temperature of 273 to 278 Kelvin, which is pretty low, and you get a diazonium salt. And here, this would be a benzene diazonium. If X is chlorine, it would be a benzene diazonium chloride, a benzene diazonium bromide. So it is a benzene diazonium halide. And this is a diazonium salt. So how do we prepare the uh, aryl halides from these diazonium salts? There are three named reactions that will fall into this category. The first named reaction is Sandmeyer's reaction. In Sandmeyer's reaction, you make the diazonium salt react with cupric halide. And usually by Sandmeyer's reaction, you get the chloro and the bromo derivatives. That is chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. So what do you do? You take the diazonium salt, you make it react with Cu2X2, that is cupric halide. The halide is either chlorine, it can be Cu2Cl2 or it can be Cu2Br2. If you use Cu2Cl2, you'll get chlorobenzene. If you use Cu2Br2, you'll get bromobenzene and nitrogen is given out. As we had seen in the case of uh, free radical mechanism where we use the substitution of a halogen and we used the sub uh, we studied about the substitution of uh, the halogen by electrophilic uh, substitution method. In both of these, we realized that uh, chlorine and bromine fall into one category. They usually show similar reactions while iodine uh, being larger in size has uh, bonds that are longer and therefore the bond dissociation energy is lesser. Therefore, such conditions are not required in the case of iodination. Iodination is usually under simpler uh, or easier uh, circumstances. The same is seen here also. Sandmeyer's reaction is not really required for iodination. You do not require the presence of Cu2, um, I2. Replacement by iodine does not require the presence of the cupric halide and is done by simply shaking it with potassium iodide. If you just take the diazonium salt, shake it with potassium iodide, you will get the iodine derivative. That is, the iodobenzene will be obtained. So you have this that is the benzene diazonium salt, make it react with potassium iodide and the iodine from there itself is enough to and in just a little warm temperature you can carry out this reaction and you get the iodobenzene. In the case of fluorine, I told you fluorine on the other hand is would show the opposite reaction. In all cases we saw, we saw that chlorine and bromine fall into one category. Iodine does not require such drastic conditions but fluorine is that other extreme. It is highly reactive, it could lead to violent reactions so you, these conditions would be a little drastic for it again or it would be it would be very difficult it shows extremes fluorine either it would show very violent reaction or it would actually not react under those conditions so in this case we find that if you have to carry out the fluorination there is another named reaction that is used for fluorination which is known as the balls schemann reaction how do we carry out the fluorination by balls schemann reaction in this you again take the diazonium salt like a chloro a chlorine or a bromine and it result and make it react with HBF4 and when you make it react with HBF4 it results in the formation of an intermediate which is N2BF4 negative and then this intermediate dissociates to give you the fluorobenzene nitrogen and BF3 are released 
and this particular reaction is known by the name of Wall's Scheinman reaction. Then comes another category, there is another, the third type of named reaction that is used for preparation of aryl halides with the use of disonium salts. This reaction is known as the Gatterman reaction. What, do, what happens in the Gatterman reaction? What is done here? In Gatterman reaction, you have the, uh, the benzene disonium salt and you make it react with copper in the presence of an acid or in the presence of a mineral acid and that hollow acid. So if you make it react simply with copper in the presence of HCl, it is this chlorine which will be used to substitute. So you will get uh, chlorobenzene here. And if you use N2Br and you carry the reaction out in the presence of copper and the acid that you use has the same ion that is HBr, you get the bromo product. So these were the different ways by which we can prepare the aryl halides from disonium salts. With this, I'll wrap up this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.